Big news in the banking space, not entirely unexpected. Access Bank and Intercontinental Banks having signed an MOU. Uh, your overall reaction to that news? Um, I think uh, our own reaction is um, good. Uh, we think it's good news. We think um, it marks a turning point. Um, as this news filters into the market, um, I think confidence will start to be restored um, once again. Of course, it's still very preliminary, as you've em emphasized. An MOU um, is just an MOU for now. The devil, as usual, is in the details. Um, I think shareholders are the critical stakeholders that need I mean, to be convinced that um, the deal will actually work in their own favor as well. Um, and then, of course, you go to the Securities and Exchange Commission, the CBN, still has to I mean, yeah, give a no objection um, before we then go through the whole process of sin. But I think it marks a very important stage towards the resolution um, of um, the problems we've seen in the banking sector. Of course, we saw Intercontinental Bank's uh, share price rise to maximum 5% yesterday. Access Bank, though, dropping back on the back of that announcement. And concern seems to center around the fact that it would have to inject capital into Intercontinental to bring it back to minimum capital requirements. Just how much of a concern is that for you right now? Um, well, they do have to, I mean, first of all, they've not actually um, released any statements regarding um, just how much they're going to be injecting um, into Intercontinental Bank. Um, for an earlier deal uh, where, uh, for Union Bank, where African Capital Alliance um, did say that they were going to be injecting, they specified the amount they were looking to inject, which was $750 million. So we expect for a size of bank like Intercontinental, uh, the capital injection um, would be um, significant um, to actually, um, you know, um, acquire that bank but we're still market is still waiting and of course then everybody then you know focuses on where access bank will get um, uh, the cash um, to actually um, infuse into the bank when it comes to return on investment I mean when it uh, looking at synergy and the complementary nature of this transaction how are you rating it and what muscle should we be looking forward to here um, I think um, it will be a very important deal um, Access Bank has always had the ambition of being a big bank. Uh, they've been in, in merger talks in the past um, that have not um, gone too well. Uh, this is their third attempt. Um, and if they do get this right, I think it propels them into um, a top tier bank. Um, they've been very strong um, in the corporate space, but um, they've been seen as a small bank. Um, this changes um, the picture big time um, if they can actually seal the deal. So I think it's a um, very strategic importance um, for Access Bank. At what cost? Because we haven't had any detail emerge about uh, just what kind of a price tag we're looking at here. Have there been any rumorings in the market about what we potentially could be looking at? Uh, that has been kept very quiet. Um, um, we've not had any figures being put to it, but I think that's what the details that I mentioned earlier that the market is looking for. Um, just how much uh, are you looking to inject, at what cost, where's the capital going to come from? And I think that's where people will be scrutinizing the deal. But um, if they can find the capital, and I'm sure uh, they've done their due diligence, um, so the third time around, they might just be lucky um, to get it um, done. Of course, the critical thing is then, you know, getting the, crossing the regulatory hurdles and, of course, uh, convincing the shareholders of Intercontinental um, that the deal will actually be in everybody's best interest. But on, a, on an overall note, um, it is a positive. While corporate action is keeping the markets uh, active on that end, we've got uh, results filtering through hard and fast out of uh, the banking institutions. Unity Bank, the latest to add to that list, and saying yesterday that it swung to a pre-tax profit of 13.3 billion Naira. Your overall impressions of those numbers? Um, well, I mean, my own um, impression is that that's um, a very good um, outing on Unity Bank. Um, it's one of the banks um, that has been considered um, um, fairly um, weak in terms of performance, but I think um, that result um, does show um, that, you know, um, it's a force to be reckoned with. Uh, Unity Bank, of course, has most of its operations um, in the north, and at 13.1 is a very respectable number for the size and scale of their operations. It's uh, really, though, those numbers out of First Bank and UBA that the market is heavily anticipating. We know that UBA is expected to release numbers in the first week of April, First Bank on the 19th of April. Your broad expectations in those regards? Um, well, if you look at the nine-month results, um, 
first bank um, we are hoping um, should recent decent sense of earnings um, figure um, but um, if you then look at um, um, UBA and just you extrapolate from the nine months um, the numbers um, would probably not excite um, the market um, so I guess um, you know until you actually see um, what will have what will have really changed in three months um, we expect that um, that figure will probably um, not um, not um, impress some um, investors but first bank based on what we saw for their nine months um, we are hoping that if that trend should actually um, continue then um, the set of earnings figures should actually be decent